Hi everyone. <clears throat> we are here to start uh, the whiskey session. Hi Satyam. I am Ridul. We are at Easy Diner, uh, so to say. And you can see all the bottles are ready. <laughs> Super excited. Hi Pratana. <clears throat> It's super good, no? These days, I think uh, everybody is sort of getting busy with all the uh, live sessions that that are actually going on, and so much knowledge going here and there. Uh, I think yesterday also I was all over at uh, Zoom. There were a few uh, meetings, and I think there's one more uh, family meeting going on right now. But yeah, so I think we'll just wait for a few more people to join in, and then uh, we can sort of start. In case you have any questions, I think I've received a lot of questions already uh, from yesterday, but. Uh, uh, but please let me know uh, if you have any questions. You can throw in right now. Ah, Mr. Jain, I am in Ahmedabad. <laughs> it's dry here. It's dry here as well. <laughs> We've got a little bit of stuff over here though. But uh, yeah, more or less it is dry, and uh, that's how it is supposed to be. Epicurean brat, you're the best. Thank you, sir. Hey, Ajit, how are you? Cool, I think we've got, we've got decent traction. We can start uh, as soon as possible. <clears throat> yeah, so, so it was majorly uh, about, you know, what is whiskey and, uh, uh, you know, and a little bit about how do we taste it, how do we appreciate it. And I think uh, uh, yesterday there were a few platforms wherein we put up, uh, you know, a lot of stories. Uh, we put up a lot of uh, things. And uh, we've got uh, a lot of questions that I have. And I think some of them are very interesting ones and a few eye-openers for me as well. Uh, so... Just to begin with, whiskey is nothing. It's a, it's a very simple thing, but you know how how uh, it sort of brings up different levels of flavors, different layers, and how it changes from one place to the other is what is very enticing, so to say. Uh, majorly, whiskey is made with only three ingredients. One is, of course, the rye or the barley or the base. Uh, uh, yes, what I'm saying is royal envy as well. <laughs> so one is basically a uh, the base ingredient, which is the grain, uh, or, you know, in India, for that matter, sometimes you use a lot of molasses as well. Uh, but the majority of the grain that has been uh, used in the whiskeys is uh, barley. Uh, other than that, it's water. Water water makes up more or less about 70-80% of the whiskey. So where the water is coming from <clears throat> is uh, one of the major reasons that you would see whiskey distilleries being uh, scattered in different parts of the world as well. And, and that's what makes up, uh, you know, to the most uh, of the whiskeys, uh, for that matter. And the third most important ingredient is, of course, the yeast. Uh, now, it's the yeast which actually converts the, the, the starch into alcohol, and the fermentation process happens because of that. So it's majorly these three ingredients which sort of uh, brings, uh, you know, so much of variety uh, at, uh, you know, uh, all the whiskeys, for that matter. Yeah. Uh, how is whiskey made is, I think, one of the most uh, common questions that came to me. It's basically the the, the 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 rye or the barley or the base grade that has been used, which is soaked and it is then malted on the floor uh, to germinate. And once it all germinates, uh, in fact, I have a photograph as well for you to show. Uh, now that's how it looks when it uh, when all the malt is uh, you know sort of germinating uh, back in the in the warehouses. And once it is done, uh, you know, in terms of germination and everything else, uh, that's when the fermentation process and the mash making uh, happens. And once the mash is made, uh, the fermentation happens. Uh, it is sort of a beer uh, to a great extent. And that has been distilled in either pot still or patent still to finally make a neutral spirit, which goes into different cask and, uh, uh, and the whiskey is made. Uh, just wanted to show you. So these are the kind of pot stills which are used. Uh, I don't know if you can see it. Yes. These are the kind of pot stills which are, uh, you know, used uh, to see uh, the whiskey. And this is how, uh, <laughs> yes, the background is also good. This is how the casks are sort of, uh, you know, at different distilleries. Uh, yes, you can keep the questions. I'm going to come back to all the questions one by one. And there are a few that that's coming as well. So that's how pretty much the whiskey is made. <clears throat> Uh, okay, coming back uh, to where all your attention is, uh, is, is uh, you know, what are the kind of different styles of whiskeys that we have in, in India or in, across the world for that matter. So what I've done is over here, uh, right in the middle, I have uh, kept a few single malts. Uh, right in the corner, I've kept a few uh, blended whiskeys, uh, majorly from Scotland. A few international whiskeys, which is, you know, either a bourbon or a Tennessee. <clears throat> uh, I love this Indian stuff that I have as well. 
uh, and a few collections that I could uh, get from uh, any other part of the world for that matter. Uh, starting from a single malt, you know, that was also uh, one of the major questions that always came uh, to me. How is a single malt different than a, a blended whiskey? Now, a single malt, what happens in a single malt is that um, the single malt has single grain, which is majorly the barley, uh, and is coming out of the single distillery. Uh, allow me to repeat it. It's, it's the single malt, which is coming from uh, one single distillery with one single grain as the base for that matter. Yeah. If the same single malt is coming from only one cask, then it is known as a single cask whiskey. However, if the, there are different single malts which are blended together, uh, that's known as that's known as a blended malt whiskey. And uh, uh, if there are different single malts coming from different uh, directions or different uh, you know uh, distilleries as well, that is actually known as a blended uh, whiskey, which could be either a Scotch or wherever. Yeah, so that's the single malt. Uh, the, the, the number that is written on the single malt depicts basically the youngest malt uh, that is uh, uh, that's there uh, in, in the entire blend. So that's how the num name comes out. Uh, then of course you have these beautiful blended uh, scotch whiskies. Uh, black label is uh, black label and shivers are sort of the, the most favorite ones or the most selling or the most popular ones so to say. Uh, in fact, uh, if, just to tell you, you know a couple of good uh, insights or facts that I came across Black Label. Uh, Black Label was actually known as uh, old uh, uh, Highland whiskey at a point of time and it was because of the label uh, and since it was black in color the name Black Label was given and so is the case with Red Label as well. Uh, I think it was early 1900s if I'm not wrong. Uh, if Ajay is around he can probably correct me. But yeah, so that's how Black Label uh, sort of came and Black Label is a blended whiskey as I said. Uh, it's got almost 40 different single malts, uh, as they say, uh, from different parts of Scotland, which are owned by, uh, you know, DIGO primarily, but others as well. And they, they take all the best single malts from almost uh, different parts of Scotland and blend together to call it the black label. Uh, and so on, the so the story with blue label and so on and so forth. Monkey Shoulder is another one that is really, really popular these days. Uh, now, this is a perfect example of a blended malt uh, whiskey which is not a blended whiskey it's a blended malt whiskey uh, with that i would uh, i would uh, suggest that it is a blend of three different single malts so when three different single malts coming together uh, there is it's called blended malt whiskey and when there are different 40 almost uh, different malt and grain spirits coming together that's known as a blended whiskey which is a uh, black label or shivers so to say uh, how about Single malts from India, Paul John uh, is of course there, uh, you know, which is sort of uh, making a lot of too many monkeys, which is making a lot of uh, noise these days, which obviously will come down to. Coming to the questions which uh, came to me, I'll just quickly wrap them through as quickly as I can, and then we can straight up go to your, uh, uh, you know, your questions as well. Uh, single malt versus blended. I just told you, uh, single malt is single grain whiskey coming from single distillery, uh, and uh, blended whiskey is different grain and uh, you know uh, blended malts which are coming together. And once the blend is made, and that's the reason master blender becomes a very important and integral part of uh, you know uh, the the distillery as well. Uh, what is your favorite? What is my favorite single malt? I think these days I'm I'm, I'm actually enjoying a lot of uh, Paul John Bold. Uh, and then uh, uh, and, and that's what's becoming my favorite in fact right now that's what I'm having so uh, that's what it is but yeah uh, it completely depends you know uh, what mood you are in and you know where all uh, are you going and what what is it what is your company and so on and so forth how can I plan a visit to a whiskey distillery in case you want to visit a whiskey distillery I would highly suggest do not go out right now uh, at the right time actually but yeah uh, I think uh, I think Paul John has done a great job uh, when it comes to you know being a beautiful whiskey distillery uh, back in Goa. It's in south of Goa, uh, and I think it's, it's it's really really international level, so you can actually go over there. Uh, otherwise, there are a lot of these tourist companies who actually organize a complete tour of uh, Scottish distilleries and uh, you know and different parts of the world for that matter. Uh, yeah, so so depends. Once I think uh, everything opens up, there are enough and more distilleries uh, uh, that can actually open up, and you can go there. Whiskey or whiskey, K E Y, uh, what do you prefer and do you miss me? That's Ian. Is Ian around? I don't know. Yes, Ian, I miss you a lot. Uh, I think uh, uh, <laughs> long that we have had a drink, so we will definitely have. Uh, 
but uh, yeah, so that's that's another uh, you know question that comes very regularly. Whiskey usually, if you see, there are two spellings to see. One's, uh, one is W H I S K Y, and then uh, the other one is K E Y. The major difference uh, is basically the kind of uh, you know origins that it has. Uh, so it's usually the uh, the Irish ones who, who actually started uh, you know whiskey production back in uh, you know early uh, 1600, 1700 centuries, uh, and Irish are the ones who actually pronounce or used to write it as as K E Y. It was because uh, the Irish guys uh, took over America back in the 1700 century. Uh, so Americans also got influenced with the Irish. So now if you see uh, the bourbon whiskey, like for example, this is a Middle East. Uh, the bourbon whiskey would always say K-E-Y. However, if you pick up a bottle of, uh, if you pick up a bottle of Scotch, uh, Indian single malt also for that matter, they'll always be K-Y. So it is the Scotch, uh, the Indian uh, Japanese as well, because the entire influence came from Scotland, they all call it KY. Uh, does it make any difference for that matter? Not really, you know, it completely depends where the whiskey is from, what is the kind of whiskey that it is. But, uh, but yeah, uh, it completely depends where the whiskey is coming from. Name, EY or just KY doesn't really uh, make a lot of difference. Okay, the next is future of Indian whiskey. Oh, that's a, I think that's a big one. I, I, of lately, I think there are a lot of these good Indian whiskies that are, you know, sort of taking uh, the space uh, and they're doing wonderful for that matter. Uh, back in the day, there was uh, one which was uh, uh, known as Amrut. Uh, I think that came in 2004, uh, but it gained a lot of popularity in the end of the 2000s uh, because uh, Jim Murray, I think, uh, rated them as one of the best, uh, or I think the third best single malt on planet, uh, which shook a lot of heads and everybody was like, wow, uh, you know, where is it coming from? And that's where I think the Indian whiskies have started gaining a lot of uh, importance. And right now, uh, with Paul John, I think they are one of the most uh, awarded whiskey uh, companies in the world, for that matter. So that, uh, and then Rampur is a new addition, uh, for that matter. In fact, I tasted, uh, ah, there you go. Off lately, I tasted this whiskey, uh, Peter Scott Black. Uh, I'm sure a few of you would remember what a Peter Scott used to be. Uh, but that's uh, another beautiful single malt uh, that's... Uh, you know, so I, I really see, uh, you know, a great future for Indian single malt. Uh, if, if you really talk about Indian, uh, just Indian whiskey, uh, I don't know, some of you might, might be surprised to know. If you Google the top 10 Indian, uh, top 10 selling whiskey brands uh, across the world, uh, actually four or five of them are, are, are coming from India. Uh, you know, from the feedback of, uh, from the likes of uh, Amaro, uh, from the likes of Officer's Choice, Original Choice, there are so many whiskies which are actually coming from India and are selling way beyond in terms of the numbers compared to any big name for that matter. So yeah, so yeah, uh, future of Indian, I think it's, it's, I can see a lot happening in Indian whiskey scene and I, I can see uh, a lot more accolades coming in uh, for that matter in Indian whiskey scene. The next question comes, what is your favorite whiskey and why? This is Sweet Sour Sonam. Okay, uh, my favorite whiskey, again, it's sort of the same question, but I don't know. I mean, it completely depends, uh, you know, uh, your favorite whiskey depending on the mood and everything. I think what, what we should remember is uh, which particular brand of whiskey or which particular liquid uh, sort of uh, gave you uh, a bit of nostalgia for that matter. So I remember there was this... Uh, uh, you know, when I was in Taj, uh, there was this training that was done by a whiskey company and uh, we had to do a blind tasting. And uh, during that blind tasting, uh, I actually picked up a 18 years old, uh, above than a 21 years old. And that was something which sort of I still remember. And we were doing uh, this tasting in a, in a champagne coupe, uh, which was not the right way maybe, but yeah, <clears throat> that's what we were doing. And I remember this uh, guy uh, clicked the photograph and that particular photograph till date is in the Taj wine room, which is sort of, uh, you know, uh, amazing for me. And it's a great feeling. So whenever I go there and, and I always uh, remember uh, that particular brand of whiskey. So, yeah, uh, that is something which is memorable. Uh, my favorite, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. It completely depends, you know. Cool. The next question is, what do you think about NAS whiskeys? What is NAS? NAS, N-A-S. Uh, that's again uh, a you know, a very popular term these days. NAS it basically means uh, non-age statements. Now, that is the new wave of uh, uh, whiskeys that is actually coming out, uh, which is also known as NAS whiskeys. In fact, I have a few. There you go. 
So usually in a bottle of uh, single malt or whiskey, you would see a uh, number written, which means the age of the whiskey and so on and so forth. But uh, off lately, there are a lot of whiskey, especially the bigger brands, which are coming in and they do not write any particular number on the whiskey, which basically means the whiskey could be just three years old, uh, which is the basic strategy, uh, basic, uh, you know, uh, legal compliance, or it could be a, a, a beautiful whiskey as well. Uh, for example, this is this. Uh, there is this Glen Levitt, uh, you know, uh, Founders Reserve that I have. Now, this is a particular whiskey which was uh, dedicated to, uh, you know, the founder himself, and uh, <clears throat> and this was made in a similar style, as they say, which used to be there uh, back in the days uh, for the founder. In fact, there's another one. <clears throat> Shivas Regal Extra. Uh, usually you would see 12, 15, 18 written on Shivas Regal as well. Now this is a particular limited edition that actually came out with the, uh, wherein they were actually putting the whiskies in Oloroso cask, which is an old sherry cask from Spain. So it, it depends. Now is it good or bad? That's a, there is a, there is a lot of debate that's actually going on, uh, on in terms of the NAS whiskies or no age statement whiskies, wherein uh, you know, there, is, there are these good parts as well, uh, which say that it gives a huge amount of freedom to a lot of uh, master blenders and they can showcase their art, they can dedicate the whiskies to, you know, whomsoever they want to. Uh, on the other side, they also say that, uh, you know, it, it sort of doesn't, uh, you know, showcase. Uh, at times, there are these connoisseurs who are also saying that it's a sort of contradiction to what whiskey companies told us earlier. Uh, you know, there are these companies who actually mentioned about the age and they were posting about 18, 21, 25, and suddenly you have, uh, you know, these whiskies which say uh, no age statement, uh, nothing, but this is sort of, you know, one of the best that I have or a limited edition that I have. Uh, another thought process to this particular uh, thing is uh, supply versus demand. Uh, so I'm sure the demand of whiskey has really, really gone uh, up, but the supply is not as good. So these guys come up with these old blends, uh, mix mixing younger whiskies and the older whiskies. And once they come together and they taste really delicious, that's when, uh, you know, some of these uh, limited editions are formed. So completely depending on how do you take it and completely depending on the, on, on the label. Okay, the next is, what is Angel Share? Mm. So yeah, Angel Share. Uh, Angel Share is basically, you know, whenever we age whiskeys in a cask, <clears throat> there is some amount of whiskey that actually evaporates uh, because of the humidity or the climate. Now, that is what is what we what used to be called as angel share. Until date, it is called as angel share. However, uh, one thing that I would definitely want to clarify over here is it depends how much of angel share is happening in which part of uh, uh, the world, for that matter. Like in Scotland or the colder countries, uh, the legal uh, angel share amount is almost two uh, percent, which means if I put hundred liter uh, barrel in a uh, in a corner and let it age. Uh, after one year, I would probably get uh, 98 liters in that barrel. But usually it is 1.5 uh, plus minus. However, in India, because the climate conditions are so humid and so different than the rest of the world, in India, like for example, Paul John, Amrut and all these guys are losing almost 7 to 8 percent because uh, of the climate and the humidity. Now, does that mean fast raising? Yes, it does. And that is the reason you cannot have a lot of whiskeys coming out of India, uh, which is 12 years old because... Uh, uh, because it is almost three to four times faster than Scotland, uh, both in terms of aging and in terms of angel share. So, yeah, <clears throat> that solves angel share. Japanese whiskies, what are your thoughts on it? Uh, Japanese whiskies, of course, uh, became very popular uh, of lately. I, I think back in 2014 or 15, Jim Murray again, uh, you know, stated saying that uh, this is one of the best single malt on planet. I think it was Yamazaki uh, 17 because of which it became famous. But if you see back in the days, Japanese whiskies are not very old. It is not, it is almost, I think, 100 plus minus years old uh, entire industry. Wherein uh, Mr. Taketsuru and uh, Mr. Tori, uh, two people, uh, you know, rather Mr. Taketsuru is actually known as the father of whiskey, who was sent by Mr. Tori to Scotland to learn more about whiskies. Uh, he came back uh, married to a Scottish girl, which is interesting. Uh, but he came back with a lot of traditions and a lot of understanding of how uh, whiskies are actually made. And that's when he started, uh, you know, along with Mr. Tori, started this company, uh, a big, huge brand, which is, uh, which is known as Yamazaki. Uh, but after a point of time, I think they parted ways and uh, Mr. Mr. Taketsuru went ahead 
and he started to make his own uh, you know company and he started his own whiskies which is today known as nika which is pretty much one of the biggest uh, distilleries in japan and a big name no doubt and uh, mr taketsuru here uh, mr tori over here uh, changed uh, or renamed his yamazaki company into uh, into what is known today as santori uh, another quick fact uh, santori the name uh, is nothing else but it is you know usually when you go to japan uh, you have uh, uh, you know a, a salutation which is uh, san so if if i go to japan people will call me as ankur san that's how they used to call uh, tori san uh, so if you see the name santori is nothing but a reverse of particular name which is tori santori so that's how the name santori came out uh, so yeah that's that's that what it is and uh, and of course i think uh, the the secret sauce uh, of japanese uh, for that matter in terms of uh, uh in terms of the the quality and the taste is mizunara oak uh japanese whiskey actually go from mizunara oak mizunara is a particular kind of oak which comes from mizunara oak tree uh the oak tree is supposed to be at least 200 years old uh that's what makes uh, mizunara a good mizunara and they were actually used for uh, fancy furnitures now is when they use for aging as well uh uh i, I think after 15 20 years of aging in zunara that's when japanese realized that they they have actually hit a gold spot and they have started making good whiskies and today uh, i think uh, again you know demand supply uh, is another issue uh, with regards to the japanese whiskies but uh, you got to be very careful when it comes to japanese whiskies as well uh, because top of the line whiskies are some amazing whiskies but uh, if you go to uh, you know really you know base level sort of whiskies the japanese law i believe says that uh, to call it a japanese whiskey you need to have just 10% and japanese liquid or japanese juice in it which means you can actually uh, bulk import a lot of scottish or any other stuff and add a bit of japanese and call it japanese as well now that's that a, a huge debate that's going on but um, but yeah japanese whiskies are good no doubts and i i, I love hibiki as well okay uh, what are the best glasses to be used for drinking whiskies uh, i think that's also one of the questions that was quite popular which came through a lot differently so what i've done is i've just created a uh, you know small array of two different glasses uh that's uh that's more a brandy balloon so to say but that's also known as coupe if in case the 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 stem is taller so either this particular glass is something that i usually use for uh tasting because this is kind of available as well what happens over here is that the that the base is sort of broad so i get to uh, you know get the all the aromas right uh, in my nose and that's uh, probably how it captures the other or uh, the most uh, you know uh, re re recorded or rewarded glass uh, or most accepted glass is this uh, glen cairn glass uh, which is also uh, used a lot when it comes to uh, you know smelling or drinking whiskies or uh, i think but uh, uh, but these are the kind of glasses that i would really recommend you when you want to taste the whiskey when you want to really you know, understand the whiskey or there is a blind tasting or there is a technical tasting going on but otherwise i i myself as you can see i i i prefer just a regular highball uh, glass you know that's an that's another blue glass that i really love so uh, it, it i i think it depends uh, completely you know what you want to have even a highball is good enough if you are having a tall drink for that matter okay cool i think most of the questions are done one question is left which i cannot answer i think the question coming over here as well is where are you getting these bottles from and can i get a bottle no you cannot get a bottle these days because it's all dry uh coming back I think now I am uh, open to questions as much as you want and I think I could answer most of the questions uh, in the entire thing. Uh I just go back. I just go back a bit and try to answer as many. Do you mind putting uh, uh the questions again? she was brother she was brothers are amazing no doubts little issues with the internet can you hear me guys
have to have at least uh, uh, you have to have at least 51% of uh, you know 51% of the rye to call it uh, the rye whiskey please share one of your best uh, whiskey concoctions very good uh, I think uh, these days I'm really really enjoying uh, you know whiskey and ginger uh, ginger ale so I think that works really well otherwise usually uh, old fashioned or the classic whiskey drinks is uh, is something that I really really go for why do people don't prefer cheap Indian whiskey? What's the difference? Okay, so cheap Indian whiskey is, uh, it completely depends. Uh, I'm sure there are a lot of people prefer it. If you, call, if you talk about the numbers, uh, you know, enough for people. But cheap Indian whiskeys are usually made uh, with the base of molasses and there is a little bit of grain spirit. Uh, molasses is uh, basically, uh, you know, uh, the, the thing that comes out of uh, sugar cane. Uh, so I think that's majorly one of the reasons. And of course, the flavor and the aging process is very different. So uh, people don't uh, really prefer a lot of uh, cheap whiskies. Sir, sanitizer kar sakte hain. Uh, sanitizer, yes, uh, it is alcohol based, but uh, jokes apart, it needs to have at least 60% of alcohol content on the base. Uh, that's the reason, uh, you know, uh, it's called. So I would not really, I mean, if you don't have an option, go for it, but don't waste a good whiskey on sanitizing yourself. Which one is more smoky as per use it? Laga Ol in 16 or Taliskar 18? I think uh, there is a blind tasting that needs to be done and that's only that's when I'll be able to tell it. Laga Ol in 16 is something that I've tried a lot and I love it. Uh, I think uh, I think a good, uh, you know, uh, smoky whiskey needs to have a decent amount of acidity as well, which is what I love about Laga Ol in uh, 16. Mm -hmm. Taliskar 18, I think uh, I, I'm still yet to sort of taste it. Only source of alcohol. Mm -hmm. Good going, we can hear you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Now, is Imperial Blue preferable? Uh, I'm not sure. It completely depends on how uh, and when and uh, what kind of whiskeys do you like. I know a lot of people who actually like. Uh, uh, Black label over blue label. Uh, there are a lot of people who like a particular style of whiskey. It completely depends. In fact, uh, there was this event when I was working with Marriott, uh, wherein the pouring uh, whiskey brand was actually uh, Royal Salute 21 for about 700 people, but the host himself was just drinking black label. So I think it completely depends. A very preferential uh, sort of choice uh, uh, that uh, you know you need to ask. Is any whiskey above 45 percent alcohol? Yes, yes. In fact, uh, uh, Paul John, uh, I think Bold Brilliance and it also is about 46%. Uh, the new one, Nirvana, which is yet to be launched in North India, uh, that's about 40%. So, yes, there is. Is whiskey good for diabetes? What do you suggest for someone who has sugar issues? I would highly suggest. The thing is that, uh, of course, whiskey has calories. Uh, but uh, also, there was another question that was coming very regularly was, uh, uh, do you get fat when you, when you consume a lot of whiskey? Uh, or beer for that matter. Now, it depends what you are adding. I would highly suggest you not to have too much of whiskey. Uh, one or two, you know, uh, as per recommended uh, this thing and, and for uh, for heart as well. They say one or two uh, shots are good enough, which is about 60 ml uh, per day. Uh, but what you're mixing it with the, whis the whiskey with is also something that matters a lot. Uh, do not add, uh, I mean, it depends how do you prefer it. But uh, I would just suggest to, to get, uh, you know, uh, away from the colas and stuff. What's your view on Paul John? Uh, Paul John, I think, uh, great. I've been working with them as well, uh, you know, in, in some parts and uh, stuff. Uh, and uh, I think it's it's one of the best uh, whiskeys. You know, something which is very interesting uh, that comes from Paul John, the, the detail uh, that, they, that they get into. So I think you have to be positive about, uh, you know, and, and strong and proud about what you do. Uh, these guys use six row barley instead of a regular two row barley. Uh, these guys do non-chill filter, which means uh, they do not do a lot of cosmetic changes. Uh, also, that reminds me, most of these whiskies are actually adding uh, some color uh, and they go through chill filtration to uh, to make it look beautiful. And, uh, you know, whenever you add a little bit of water to that whiskey, it remains exactly the same. So any whiskey that you pick up for that matter, on the pack label, it will say uh, a little bit of color added. However, uh, if you pick up a Paul John, they do not add any color. So I think that is something which is a very bold step. Uh, and, and I think uh, the whiskies are non-chill filter, which is a bold step coming from them. So, yeah, I mean, kudos. Greetings from Turkey. Cheers. Cheers. Anand Patin. Uh, or else, black label versus double black. What, do you, what is the difference? I think double black is uh, the way it came across. It is a little more smokier, a little more uh, stronger, and a little more masculine sort of whiskey as compared to a black label. Uh, 
uh, again completely depends uh, you know how do you prefer it i love uh, black label over a double black for that matter but it completely depends uh great learning session thank you what's your take on royal salute royal salute i have a small miniature <laughs> royal salute yeah so uh, i love royal salute as well i mean uh, who doesn't but again it, it it completely depends like for a royal salute to open up i would need a particular occasion i cannot open a royal salute every day uh but uh, but yeah it's a it's a beautiful uh, you know dram does wine make one high uh Yes, of course, wine has uh, alcohol content in it. Depending on how much you drink, you can, and, and what's your capacity, <laughs> you it, it definitely makes you high. Uh, what is the best Irish whiskey? I think Old Bushmills is something that I really, really love. Uh, and I think Irish has started now exploring and uh, expanding into different worlds as well, other than uh, uh, just whiskey. So there is this uh, gin that I uh, of lately have started really enjoying, named as Gunpowder, which is also coming from uh, uh, Ireland. So uh, I think that is what I enjoy. Should we take Kesar Kasturi Desi alcohol in lockdown? Well, if that's the only thing that's left with you, I don't know. Yeah, why not? <laughs> it's actually a good one. I know it's a little harsh, uh, but I think it's, it's something which is uh, uh, which is not really uh, got uh, the the real due credit for what it is. Uh, I think Kesar Kasturi is beautiful, but it depends. Uh, you know, yeah, you can take it. How to appreciate and taste, decide whether to drink a single malt or blended. Yeah, that's another one. Uh, I think a lot of people show off by saying I'm a single malt guy and this and that. And I've done a lot of blind tastings. I think that's when you really, really get to know if you are more a, uh, a blended whiskey guy or a single malt guy. Now, it's not that if it is a single malt, it has to be better than blended or the other way around. It completely depends on what you prefer. So single malt uh, for one, from one side, it's a single grain coming from single distillery. So the, wine, uh, the, the master blender is also very constrained or restricted with a lot of things that he cannot do. However, a blended whiskey for that matter can come from different uh, single malts which are blended together or different great whiskey, uh, grain whiskeys which are coming together uh, and, and then you know a blended uh, uh, whiskey is made. So it completely depends on what you prefer uh, but uh, you know some people like smoky, some people like uh, you know uh, different styles of whiskeys. So I, I think the best is to sort of do a blind tasting when the when the glass has only the whiskey in it and you do not know which whiskey is it, uh, where is it coming from. That's the best way to really, really judge the liquid uh, and judge your palate as well uh, that, you know, which one is going to be the, the best one for you. What are the differences in Johnny Walker labels? Why so much variation? Oh, it completely depends. Again, uh, it is, uh, you know, starting from the red label to the blue label and so many labels. They're basically uh, the levels of premiumness that they suddenly go to uh, or they, uh, uh, that's the level, you know, for example, uh, a black label to a red label, uh, it's just the blend, it's just the kind of whiskeys that are coming in and, and, and of course, you know, what is the kind of aging that's gone in. So, for example, if I... Uh, if I want to make one blended whiskey to the other, and so in, in, in case one, I use, you know, the younger uh, blends just, you know, after 12, 15 years aging, and I blend it and I give it to you, that's, you know, a, a basic blended whiskey. But if I go back to, uh, you know, the cask, which are almost 20 years, 30 years old, and I pick up some stuff over there, uh, and I blended with the younger ones uh, to create some really, really good concoctions. That's when probably, uh, you know, a good or a better blended whiskey will come out. So that's just one part of it. And then there are enough and more, uh, you know, variations that you can uh, get. Does the fermentation process differ? Uh, I didn't get your question. Differ in, in what sense? Usually the fermentation process is the same, uh, which is, uh, you know, uh, uh, which is basically uh, converting starch into alcohol uh, by the use of yeast. So it's pretty much the same. Uh, it's basically the distillation that makes a lot of difference. Uh, either it's going in a pot still or a patent still. And then of course the aging, uh, wherein it goes in the barrel, that's what makes the most of the difference and that's where the magic comes in. Absolutely. Exilers, we can come down to later. Monkey shoulder, what's your take? I think it's a great, uh, uh, you know, blended malt whiskey. Uh, and I think more than just the liquid, I think the way these guys have come out and they've done so much, uh, you know, in terms of uh, making the whiskey look a little more cool and not so, you know, uptight and stuff. Uh, I, I think uh, that's amazing. And the kind of promotion that Monkey uh, 47 has, uh, Monkey Shoulder has done, uh, they're really, really good. You know how the name Monkey Shoulder came from? 
back in the days uh, when uh, you know these guys used to do malting by doing so much malting their shoulder used to have some injuries uh, and the shoulder used to look like uh, a little you know a sort of pouch uh, which is uh, what it was called as monkey shoulder uh, and that sort of uh, you know is uh, where the name monkey shoulder also derived from so quite interesting yeah as jnb is very light on color so does it mean that the coloring agent is absent or less in quantity uh, it it actually depends uh, on the coloring agent uh, and and you know what is the kind of final product that they want to go usually uh, when you see uh, you know younger whiskies are usually lighter and uh, you know as the age uh, comes in and 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 for the for the longer that they are kept uh, the age uh, or the color grows on but uh, if if it says that it is got added color in it then it becomes a little decisive to sort of uh, you know uh, define or understand what is the you know level of color or uh, the aging for that matter but yeah if you taste it uh, if you getting young fruits uh, you know younger flavors uh, it means it's a little younger but if you getting you know uh, you know uh, heavier flavors and very complex different layers of flavors that's when uh, it is aged does whiskey raise sugar levels in body yes of course uh, it it does uh, uh, you know uh, have sugar levels is bourbon the same as tennessee no not really bourbon whiskey and tennessee whiskey are two different uh, i mean under the same umbrella but two different styles of whiskies uh, tennessee particularly has to go through uh, i'll just show you in fact Uh, so that's uh, uh, usually Jack Daniels. Uh, also, people say as bourbon. Uh, this is uh, John Medley's, which is also uh, you know a bourbon whiskey. This is uh, what a bourbon whiskey is. But uh, in Jack Daniels or any sweet Tennessee whiskey, if you see, uh, it would always say sugar maple charcoal, which means if the Tennessee whiskey has gone through the sugar maple charcoal, it can be called as Tennessee whiskey. Otherwise, it cannot be called as a Tennessee whiskey. So yeah, so bourbon and Tennessee are different for that matter. Good, 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 good. good. what's your take on authenticity of whiskey especially state wise uh, we see a change in taste i think uh, you know it 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 depends the change in taste uh, uh, you know i've tasted the same brand i don't want to name the brand but i see the same brand from you know let's say two three different countries uh, wherein the taste was a little different as well but uh, the taste difference does not only uh, happen because it's a fake whiskey or you know uh, it is not the right one but it also happens because of the quality of water as i said water becomes very important so uh, so the whiskies which are uh, you know sort of imported in india in bulk and they are cutting down in with the water uh, it depends on what kind of water are you adding in it as well that's one now is fake whiskey a issue it is a huge issue no doubts i think 2009 or 10 uh, the, the the statement also came out saying that uh, you have more black labels sold in india than made back in scotland which uh, i know it was very funny but to a great extent it was true as well so uh, i think authenticity completely depends but a lot of companies what these uh, guys are doing is they're putting up small little barcodes and stuff like that which you can scan and it can go back to the batch numbers and stuff like that so uh, i think it's been tackled with technology but you still have the issue no doubts about it what's your take on whisky mixer uh, water soda ice cola uh depends what do you like uh, what's your preference i have uh, i have actually served a glenfiddich 40 years old with diet coke as well which i know uh, would be a crime in a lot of uh, minds but uh, since the person is ready to pay for it and he is enjoying it i don't care uh the right way to drink it i always prefer my whiskey with a little bit of water so that it just opens up uh, enough uh, i don't try to add a lot of ice because uh, that's one of shatters uh, for that matter but uh, but yeah it, it depends but i think ice uh, water is, is sort of good soda depending if you want a little more of acidity please what's your opinion about amrut now amrut is again uh, i think uh, a huge respect to amrut for uh, you know taking that courageous step and making uh, something which is uh, amazing uh uh they have a different uh, variations uh, you know as well so amrut fusion is something that i really really love the most uh and and yeah amrut is is great whiskey no doubts about it monkey shoulder as a brilliant story yes uh, limpan thank you very much interesting uh, which one is your favorite oh i just mentioned uh, i think uh, it completely depends on the mood uh, that i am in am i traveling what is the kind of company that i have uh but these days uh, i am hooked to the paul john bold uh, which i am really really enjoying with the with the sepoil coat ginger ale uh but yeah that was a quick plug plug in but yeah 
कुछ नहीं विस्की हैव यू ट्राइड नो आई हैव एन ट्राइड इट आई वुड लव टू ट्राई इट एज वेल आई थिंक आई एम येट टू ट्राई इट सो आई वुड रियली रियली बी हैप्पी बट द स्टोरी इज रियली रियली अमेजिंग गाइज चेक इट आउट कुछ नहीं विस्की दैट्स द स्टोरी इज अमेजिंग पटिया राइट थैंक्स ऑन द कलरिंग ओके is whiskey and whiskey different yes we've just answered that question uh, the e basically comes from irish americans uh, because uh, uh, because that is and uh, you know uh, back in the days the gaelic word whiskey which is water of life was different over there and that's probably the reason uh, and uh, whiskey KY is basically uh, you know inspired from the Scottish traditions so Scotland India Japan even Canada for that matter they use KY so if you see the bottle of whiskey but does it make uh, the difference to the whiskey or any style that it is trying to not really uh what are your few favorite brands of old fashion Oh, old fashioned, old fashioned. Uh, I think a, a little bit of smoky whiskey is something that I really, uh, you know, giving a twist with. Uh, in fact, uh, again, I'll come back to the Paul John Bold. They have something known as a bold fashion, uh, which they make with Paul John Bold. That sort of works really, really well these days. Volume by volume, that's basically the percentage of alcohol uh, that's in the whiskey. Paul John Brilliant, yeah, that's a good one as well. In aged whiskey, few drops are added, or whole whiskey is added. oh it completely depends uh, you know whenever there is a blend that's going on it is the uh, it is a master blender who's sitting with a lot of uh, you know individual uh, single malts and it it depends how you want your whiskey to be tasting uh, do you want it to be smoke heavy do you want it to be peat heavy do you want it to be you know a little more on the highland side which is you know a little more sweeter style of whiskey or honey notes and stuff so depending on that uh, the addition of you know whole whiskey or depending uh, you know is is added uh, it is a great marketing gimmick as well because a lot of times people say that uh, you know the whiskey going in this particular uh, bottle is uh, from the you know 1980s and so on and so forth but uh, you know yeah but whenever you see the the number written on the bottle that means the youngest whiskey in that particular entire blend in the bottle is those many years old so for example if you see 21 written on royal salute that means the youngest whiskey that's going in royal salute is 21 years old hennessy or black label which would be worth buying uh depending what do you like what's your take on katisa katisa is a good one for sure no doubts uh again what kind of whiskies do you like is what matters so whenever you in fact uh, you know a lot of people ask me what kind of whiskey is this what kind of whiskey is that uh, there are a lot of times uh, when you can just read the label and there is so much that actually uh, comes out of that label itself so once you read the label the front and the back you will get to know a lot of stuff about the whiskey uh, what are the key points to pair whiskey with food oh depends what is the kind of food that you are having uh, if you are having really creamy and really you know heavy food i would really go for the heavy ones uh, which is you know the ile style of whiskey is to cut through uh, the entire acidity uh, but if you get going with a very lighter style or you know just the salads and stuff like that i would rather just go for a good highball to be made uh, along with the, you know the light dinner that we that we having does bailey's irish cream have a shelf life how long can it be stored and sealed in the fridge i think once it is sealed uh, it can stay for very long uh, no doubts about it but uh, once you open up i i've seen uh, bailey's ice cream uh, irish cream sort of curdling uh, you know to a great extent so uh, i would not really store it for a very long time maybe months or two maximum is black dog gold reserve good to make a whisky sour yeah for sure uh, i think yes we can make uh, you know a good whisky sour with that depending on uh, you know how you make it i would just you know keep on uh, you know making a good one uh, i think it it could be a good base for that matter do whiskies have an expiry date i don't think so i don't know i i i mean i've seen uh, whiskies uh, you know in fact my dad had a whisky which was you know stored from very very long time uh i i i saw the bottle it was sealed uh, almost one fourth of the bottle was gone because of evaporation or so to say angel share uh, probably the whiskey was getting aged in my home but uh, it was good to go i mean i i opened the bottle and i think i tasted it and it was it was it was okay do you have a personal instagram handle yes i do i am alive uh, which is live on the other side as well it's ankur chavla with double a at the end what whiskey should one use for cooking ah oh. 
if you're really making a good steak, if you're really, really making something good, uh, then you can pick up, uh, you know, so usually what happens is uh, whenever you, whenever you're using whiskey or any alcohol for that matter for cooking, the alcohol basically evaporates. So it is basically the flavors that come to you. Uh, so depending on what kind of flavor do you want, so if I am making, let's say, a rosemary thyme steak, uh, wherein I want a little more of smokiness, I would rather pick up a whiskey which is, you know, uh, more from the Isle or the south of uh, Scotland, uh, and I think uh, that would really do uh, wonders. But uh, if I want to add more of, uh, let's say, you know, uh, those... So, for example, you know, in, in uh, during Christmas time, we add a lot of whiskey or rums to the cake. Uh, so, I think anything from Highland uh, with, you know, those kind of aromas is good enough to go. What about Indian food pairing with whiskey? Yes, it goes really well and we can do a lot. In fact, uh, Amrut, I, I, had, I remember attending this uh, whiskey paired dinner wherein Amrut had done a pairing of whiskey with the, the food at work in Taj Mahan Singh. And that came out really, really nice. So, yes, there is a lot uh, that can be done in terms of pairing. See, the idea of pairing is that they both have to go together very well. Uh, it is more a marriage that, than, than a contrast that I, that I personally love. So, if, if one is enhancing the taste of the other uh, and vice versa, I think it's a great pairing. So, can it be done? Yes, it definitely can be done. Yes, that's correct, sir. Those are fears. Perfect. Does whiskey stored in a bottle gets aged? We stock of the bottle at home for a longer time. No, it doesn't really matter a lot uh, because, uh, you know, it is not really exposed to anything other than just the bottle. Uh, so I don't think there is a lot that uh, sort of changes, uh, you know, if, if the whiskey is stored at your home. Uh, but, uh, but, but I think what, what people have started doing is, uh, you know, a lot of people have actually started to make these uh, aged cocktails. So you can actually make, let's say, an old-fashioned uh, and just put it in a small barrel uh, at your home, which are, you know, these home barrels that actually come these days. Uh, and you can actually age them, uh, probably six months to, you know, about a year, and you can really enjoy it. What's the deal with Irish and Japanese whiskey? Uh, what do you mean, what's the deal? Uh, uh, both of them are really good. Japanese whiskey of lately have started gaining a lot of popularity. Uh, and they have some really good stuff as well. So, uh, Mizu Nara Oak, as I mentioned earlier as well, that's what uh, is the secret sauce to Japanese whiskeys, uh, and they're doing wonderful stuff, no doubts. What's your hack to identify authenticity, check for adulteration in a flicker, uh, given the prevalent mall practices in the market? I don't have a strong sense of taste to identify by drinking. I think, uh, you know, just buying it from the right source is the first and foremost uh, thing that I always do. Uh, that's the best way to sort of make sure that, you know, the whiskey is coming in the right way. Uh, but of course, when you open it, when you have it, uh, you know, a lot of people, a lot of my friends also tell me this. Uh, and I think this is something which a lot of people use as a thumb rule, wherein, uh, wherein when you drink the whiskey, uh, you know, there are these, uh, when you add a little bit of water, there are these oily things that come on top. Uh, and when you drink it too much, tomorrow morning, uh, the next day morning, you have a headache. I think that's when uh, I would want to avoid that particular liquid, be it whiskey or, you know, whatsoever. Just my glass is empty. Can somebody fill? Atul, no, I cannot fill it right now. I wish I could. <laughs> or is pink water? or the key points to pair whiskey with food. I think I just mentioned about it uh, that, uh, you know, um, the key point is, uh, the key point of pairing whiskey with the food is that it has to blend together, it has to go together, it has to sort of work very well. It, it's more like a marriage than anything else. If one is enhancing the flavor of the other, I think that's when uh, it can work really, really well. How many times the cask are used? used to age whiskey is it just once or more than once they age in the same class i think uh, a lot of times it depends so you know a lot of times you would also read as i mentioned uh, shiva's particular uh, you know the, the the label that we that we have over here uh, they use oloroso sherry cask in fact paul john they use uh, the old cask that they take from uh, 
from America, the white, uh, you know, oak cask. So usually uh, the sherry cask is becoming very popular of lately. Uh, usually it is American oak cask that is going into Scotland to, to you know, uh, age more whiskies. Because uh, whenever you age a whiskey in a new oak barrel, uh, it gives you a lot more sharpness. But if you age it in an old barrel, it gives you a lot more, uh, you know, a, a lot more mellower style of whiskey than uh, this thing. So yeah, it can be used, uh, you know, many times for that matter. Why does antiquity give me headache post the session? Antiquity is not for you then. <laughs> Change your drink. Should I drink my whiskey neat or on the rocks? Uh, it depends on what whiskey you are drinking and how do you prefer the style of the whiskey. Uh, expensive or, uh, you know, or big single malts, I would not really recommend to drink it with on the rocks. Purely because, uh, you know, think about it. In the winters, you sort of shrink, right? Uh, and, and, and with so much of ice, it shatters the flavor and it doesn't let the whiskey open up. Every liquid has got a, you know, particular point wherein it shows the best. Uh, too chilled a whiskey would not really show a lot of flavors to it. But again, as I said, it completely, completely depends on, uh, uh, you know, how do you prefer the whiskey. What is the difference between chill filtered and non-chill filtered? Ah. So, uh, non-chill so chill filtration, if you so to understand, uh, is basically a concept uh, that has been using, uh, that has been used by a lot of distilleries, uh, basically for the com uh, for the cosmetic changes. So, what happens is uh, you chill the whiskey uh, or the liquid to even you know zero to even minus four and minus seven, depending on the kind of liquid that you have, and then it goes through a chill filter, wherein the particles or uh, you know the fatty acids and everything has been taken off. The whiskey looks brilliant, it shines through, when you add water to it, it doesn't change at all. So a lot of these whiskies are doing chill filtration. However, uh, the old concept of non-chill filtration is coming back, wherein, uh, you know, uh, a lot of uh, these top-end whiskies are also becoming non-chill filter. In fact, as I mentioned, Paul John is a non-chill filter whiskey as well, wherein they do not filter it. So they say that we, uh, you know, it's a, it's a sort of trade-off. Uh, wherein uh, do you want a beautiful uh, looking whiskey which does not you know uh, change when you add water to it it still shines out or are you okay with the whiskey to be changing a little bit but you want all the flavors so in the in, in the chill filtration the researches or the studies shows that uh, there are a lot of changes that happens or that you, you basically lose out almost uh, plus minus 100 aromas and flavors and so on so uh, non chill filtration is basically uh, you know when you do not let the whiskey go through the chill filtration process Purely because you want a lot of aromas and a lot of meat and a lot of, you know, you, you want to chew the whiskey and you want to enjoy the whiskey as much as you want. Uh, I hope that answers your question. I have got trained by you when you used to be beverage manager at JW. Oh, okay. Oh, hello. Is buying alcohol from airport uh, safe with regards to authenticity? Yes, I, I feel so. Uh, Duty-free shops are, are probably the best and uh, the safest zones to buy uh, alcohol. And of course good price and of course the kind of collection that you get over there is amazing i mean i always try to pick up uh, you know a lot of stuff uh, wherever i travel why does teachers taste so sweet uh, sweet is something that is a perception that comes to your mind uh, it might not be as sweet to somebody else so it depends uh, you know uh, what kind of whiskies do you prefer if you do not like uh, teachers or you do not like sweet style of whiskies i would highly suggest you to sort of you know explore uh, more towards you know, the, the south uh, uh, of Scotland or try to, you know, get into a little more of smoky uh, whiskies to begin with. And then, uh, you know, you can, you know, yourself decide which ones uh, are the ones that you like. In fact, somebody was mentioning about double uh, black. So you can try that. You can try bold from Paul John. That's a little on the uh, on the peated or on the smoky side as well. There is an edited also that, that they have. So, yeah, completely depends on what you prefer. Is there a cast strength whiskey available off the shelf in India? Uh, I don't think so, but uh, no, I, I don't think so. I think if you go to Goa, these uh, Paul John guys have a lot of limited editions. So probably uh, you can pick it up, you know, something from there. They have a whiskey which is about 55 or 56 percent alcohol. That could be cool. But if you really prefer whiskeys of uh, higher alcohol strength, these guys are uh, doing about 46 percent alcohol uh, in their bold and uh, brilliance in Delhi. Hi, sir. Love to see you all over. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Hi, Shankar. Does the taste have huge impact because of filtration? Uh, not really huge, but there is definitely an impact. As I said, uh, it takes out a lot of, uh, you know, aromas and taste profiles from the whiskey. So just, just, you know, try and understand that 
one whiskey is a little more heavier, a little, little more, uh, you know, on the on the lines of uh, masculine, uh, so to say, uh, and, and 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 something that you can chew, you know, uh, something like a full-bodied Cabernet Sauvignon or wine or so. Or, or, or so. Uh, but if you take it through the chill filtration, it is becoming beautiful golden color and shining uh, amber bright. So there is a cosmetic change for sure. Uh, does it change a lot? I think mm, it, it, it definitely changes, but not as much that you can really feel, uh, you know, of taking the first sip itself. Yeah. Why does the color of Dewar's uh, white label so light as compared to other whiskey? See, uh, Dewar's is a beautiful, beautiful uh, brand that I again love as well. Uh, why is it light? It completely, you know, it's how the winemaker or the, or the sorry, the, the master blender wants to take the whiskey out. They might not be adding a lot of color for that matter and it is a young whiskey. So probably that's the one. And there are a lot of things that Dewar's has done uh, as first. In fact, uh, they are, I think the first ones are the only ones to do, uh, uh, you know, a double aged uh, sort of concept, which means, uh, which means that you basically blend the whiskey. And then, uh, uh, and then you again age it for about six months. So, uh, so Divas, I have huge respect for. I am sure whatever they're doing, they're doing a very good job in, uh, you know, uh, taking out. Are you from Mumbai? If not, then from where are you? I am very much from uh, Delhi, uh, New Delhi. Uh, we can have, uh, if you're from Bombay, then I think we can have a Delhi Bombay, uh, so to say, argument or a, a, a friendly fight later. <laughs> Are Japanese whiskeys more smoky, peaty than the scotch? I am not a big fan of peat. Ah, so Japanese whiskey is, I think, more on the lines of, uh, you, know, uh, you know, between Highland and, uh, uh, and, and Isle. Uh, I think it's a, it's a beautiful blend that they do and it's a beautiful balance that they, that they always maintain. And, and, and as I said, uh, I think the, the, the secret sauce in Mizunara Oak, uh, that's what sort of makes them a little more different. Uh, they're not really as peaty, as smoky than the scotch. Now, scotch also depends what kind of scotch are you having. If you're having a scotch uh, from north uh, part, you might not uh, see a lot of peat, uh, you know, or a lot of smoke for that matter. But if you're picking up a, sto a scotch like a Lafroig or Ardbeg from the Isle, you will definitely see a lot of, uh, you know, uh, scotch, a lot of peat and smokiness in the uh, So it, it depends. If you're not a very big fan of peat or smoke, uh, it does not mean that you cannot have, uh, you know, uh, scotch uh, whiskies. You can, but just pick up the right ones for that matter. I hope that answers Mr. Rajesh Mohan. I need to read the stock of whiskies in mind. Mr. Colonel Saab, Colonel Saab, you're, you're welcome anytime. I mean, of course, after, after you pass the yoga. No, but, uh, but yeah, yeah. Love the stock, Mandy sir. Yeah, so the I mean, just to tell you again, I think a lot of people have joined new. A uh, lot of people, just to tell you a little bit about the stock. Uh, that's a bit of scotch uh, blended stuff. That's a malt, uh, a blended malt scotch whiskey. That's the regular blend. Those are the Nass whiskey. So I just wanted to show you, uh, you know, what what are the different styles of whiskey, and that's probably and that's when you have this uh, a bottle of bourbon and a bottle of Tennessee. Uh, so yeah, it, it's just showing you different styles. And in India, you have from a Sterling Reserve to a Royal Envy to Solar Number One, which I've just picked. I think that's a that's uh, that's something which I always wanted to have in my collection. I completely went to Solon. and of course you have the entire range of Paul John. Uh, in fact, that's another beautiful one that I've off lately picked uh, in the collection. That is known as a Black Mountain whiskey. Uh, it is made. Uh, you, you know, there is this uh, uh, amazing wine. Uh, person in south of France, it's his wife who's got into making whiskey and that's where I got these black mountains from. Uh, quite interesting, isn't it? In classic whiskey sour, whiskey do you prefer? Niladri, Niladri, you know exactly which whiskey do I prefer. I think I like more uh, bold styles of whiskey uh, and I like smoky style of whiskeys in the whiskey sauce. So, uh, Paul John Bold is something that I'm, that I'm uh, having these days. Alternate for Jim Beam in old fashion. Uh, I think uh, if you stick towards the bourbon or Tennessee side, uh, I think that will make a lot more sense. Uh, a theme, uh, yeah. So, but but yeah, I love trying. As I said, I, I love trying uh, different uh, this thing. I think it is about uh, a few seconds left, guys. I will have to cut the call right now, and we can join in again if you want to. 
So, bye-bye. Yeah.